In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Join Apostle John Udo today as he teaches the Word that was with God and is now with us for our transformation. Apostle John Udo, worth hearing. This red marker indicates the 7,000 year period of the existence of the earth. As you see here, 7,000. So this is the timeline of the earth. And uh, all of these in the boxes indicate some of the most significant events that have happened in the world from the very beginning of the world up until now. The first of them is the creation of the world when God created the heavens and the earth and said let there be light and there was light and then the very next one is Noah's flood the flood of Noah that flooded the whole earth and then the third significant event according to scriptures is the law given to Moses Moses grace and truth came by Jesus Christ but the law came by Moses Moses received the law here and then after that Another significant event that happened is the division of the nation of Israel into two. Israel became two nations, Israel and Judah, divided into two. And then um, after that, we have the church age. The church age, I'll still explain in details. And after the church age, where we are in now is the church age. And after the church age, the very next thing we are expecting is the tribulation. And the tribulation will be split into two also, which is um, three and a half years each. Three and a half years each. So we have the tribulation and the great tribulation the initial part is the tribulation and afterwards we have the great tribulation then after this what we will have is the new heaven and the new earth where we will live eternally with God praise the name of the Lord of course in between these spaces there are several things that happened and um, I might mention some of them praise the name of the Lord so let's give uh, dates to these events that happened in the timeline of the world. According to scriptures, this creation took place 6,000 years ago. 6,000 years ago, that was when uh, the creation of the world took place. Remember, I've taught you that the lifespan of the earth is 7,000 years. And then 5,000 years ago, Noah's flood happened 5,000 years ago we have Noah's flood and then um, 1,600 years ago the law was given 1,600 years ago it's about 1,600 years ago the law was given and then Israel was divided into two uh, in 722 BC and 586 BC 586 so the, the the nation was divided into two and the enemy attacked uh, the part of Israel first and took them away captivity they were taken away from their land all of them relocated and then um, Later on in 586 BC, 722 BC, Israel was taken away from their land. And then 586 BC, Judah was also taken away from their land. You remember in the days of the son of uh, Solomon, Rehoboam, after Solomon handed over to his son, um, he was not as wise as his father. And so under him, the nation was divided. He had two to himself and the other ten went the other way. So the nation got divided and they never really came back together again. 
then um, we have the church age which began around 32 AD 32 AD AD means after the death of Christ the church age started around 32 AD after the death of Christ praise the name of the Lord and so um, very soon we will know when this starts right either while we are in heaven or those on earth will know when the tribulation started after we've been caught up in the rapture so we cannot fix a date for this this yet even though we know it is very much at hand praise the name of the lord so let's go back to each of them i'll need to show you from scriptures um exactly um the how that before every major event in the bible there was a rapture and i'm going to show you uh, give you several bible verses to prove that there is um, a pattern a pattern that before any major event in the history of the world somebody is taken out of the earth now the first person to be taken out of the earth was enoch before the flood of noah after methuselah the oldest man ever to live died just after he died enoch was taken out of the earth and then the flood came down and destroyed the whole earth then just before the law was given moses was raptured and many people don't know that moses was raptured but I'll, I'll give you scriptures to back it up moses did not just have a revelation from god he was taken to the mountain of god in heaven he was raptured to the mountain of god in heaven where god gave him the pattern of the tabernacle that he was to build on earth and then he came back to the earth to build that tabernacle and then just before the nation of israel was divided into two elijah was raptured and then just before the church age jesus christ came and then he was raptured hallelujah and since we have a pattern we can clearly also say that before the next major event which is the great the tribulation the seven year tribulation there must be a rapture and that will be the rapture of the church of christ there are those who say that the rapture does not happen before the great tribulation the rapture of the church does not happen before the great tribulation that rather the church will go through the tribulation and at the end of the tribulation the church will be raptured but i don't believe so because there is overwhelming evidence in the bible that shows that the rapture happens the rapture of the church happens first before the tribulation begins then now this is number four rapture five right number one two three four five rapture now during the great tribulation there's going to be a rapture and it's going to happen most likely in the midst of the tribulation in between the first half and the second half another rapture will happen and that's the rapture of the two witnesses i'm going to explain all of this to you and then at the end of the great tribulation before another major event which is the new heaven and the new earth there's going to be a final rapture which is the rapture of the tribulation saints praise the name of the lord so let's take it one by one the first person to be raptured i'll need somebody reading the bible verses for me genesis chapter 5 verse 24 enoch was the first to be raptured genesis chapter 5 verse 24 Enoch was the first man to be raptured. In fact, let's have the microphone, please, for Pastor. In fact, I believe 
that Enoch was the very first person to get to heaven among human beings. Because before Enoch, anybody that died went down. You remember I taught you about paradise, Sheol, Hades. So from Adam all the way to Enoch, including uh, Methuselah, anyone that died went down to paradise. The bosom of Abraham as it was called. But then, that means nobody had gone to heaven. Nobody had been raptured to heaven. We don't have the record whether Adam visited heaven while he was on earth. But based on scriptures, Enoch was the first person to arrive heaven. He was raptured and went to heaven bodily. Let's have that scripture read. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. For God took him. God lifted him bodily and took him to heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. So Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 tells us of the very first rapture. How that Enoch walked with God in righteousness and he was raptured by God. And then the second person is Moses according to Exodus chapter 19 verse 3. Exodus 19 3. Let's read that. And then we also have a backup in Hebrews. And Moses went up unto God. Yes, and Moses did what? Went up unto God. Did he have a vision? No. Did he have a revelation? Was he dreaming? He wasn't dreaming. He did what? He went up unto God. He was raptured. He was caught up. He went up unto God. Go ahead. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain. And the Lord, so he, he went up unto God to the mountain of God in heaven. And the Lord called unto him on the mountain. Yeah. Saying, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of all right. Jacob, all right. and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Okay, it's a lengthy scripture, but, and, and I don't want us to spend the time reading it, but you take out the time to read up Exodus chapter 19. You see that, how that Moses was raptured by God, and God gave him a pattern. I need somebody to sit beside pastor holding the microphone so that he'll just be able to open the scriptures very fast, and then um, uh, we'll be going on very quickly with that. So Moses was raptured. He was caught up to heaven. And uh, he received a pattern of the tabernacle that it was to build on earth. And God told him, make sure you build it according to what you saw on the mountain in heaven. And after he saw everything, he was brought back to the earth. And so that makes him the second person that was raptured. Now, Moses might not qualify as a perfect rapture. Why? Because he came back and died. Uh, Enoch did not come back and die and uh, as you can see the rest also Elijah did not come back Jesus did not come back to die so Moses might not pass as a perfect rapture but he, he still has um, a degree of uh, scores here so he was raptured as the second person and then around the year 1600 years um, the law was given by Moses and then just before Israel and Judah were divided in two Elijah was raptured second Kings chapter 2 verse 11 second Kings 2 verse 11 and before Moses was raptured there was a lot of blasting of uh, trumpets on the mountain which is symbolic of the trumpet that will sound uh, during the rapture of the church. Second Kings chapter two verse eleven. And it came to pass. Then it came as to the pass. Still went on and talked. That behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horse of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wide wind into heaven. Elijah did what? He went up by a wide wind into heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Elijah, you know, there were those who didn't believe that Elijah really went up. The sons of the prophet, I mean, I mean, scoffers, they, he had told them that 
God was going to rapture him. These were people he trained himself. They were with him for many years. He trained them. Uh, they knew that the things he said always come to pass. They had seen him stop the rain, bring the rain back. They had seen him perform miracles. But then he told them he was going to be raptured. Everyone except Elisha believed. And uh, by the time Elisha went with him and he was caught up, when he came back, they said to Elisha, you know what? Let's send people to go and search the mountains. He might have fallen down somewhere and broken his leg. If we can rescue him on time, you know, we can. Uh... These were his followers that knew him. Yeah, they said, look, just leave this man. Let's just go and search. He said, don't search. They insisted. He said, okay, if you want to search, go and search. They went and searched for several days. When they didn't find him, they came back and told Elisha, we didn't find him. And he said to them, didn't I tell you not to go? I saw him being cut up. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So Elijah was raptured just before. Remember I told you that before any major event in history, somebody gets raptured. Before the flood of Noah, Enoch was raptured. Before the law was given, Moses was raptured. Before the uh, kingdom of Israel was divided into two, Elijah was raptured. And then before the church age, Jesus, the Son of God, was raptured. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Yes, let's have it. Acts 1, 11. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Okay, so this same Jesus which you saw, so Jesus was speaking to his disciples and then he ascended into heaven. They saw him, a cloud received him, and while they stood there wondering, an angel appeared to them and told them, well, the way you saw him taken, that same way he's going to come back again. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus was raptured just before the church age began in about 32 AD, praise the name of the Lord. And it's worthy of note to mention that after Jesus was raptured, the Holy Ghost came down, right? To initiate the fullness of the beginning of the church age. The Holy Ghost came down. Remember Jesus told his disciples that if I don't go, he will not come. So when Jesus was raptured, the Holy Ghost descended and activated the church age in Acts chapter 2 when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord in one place and there came a sound from heaven like as of a rushing mighty wind and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance praise the name of the Lord so the Holy Spirit came down 50 days after the ascension of Jesus Christ. When Jesus ascended, right? When Jesus, um, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, rather, the Holy Ghost came down 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus resurrected, he stayed around for about 50 days appearing to the disciples appeared to mary magdalene appeared to the disciples collectively appeared to those two disciples on their road to emos he kept showing himself around for about 50 days after the resurrection so the holy ghost only came down 50 days after the resurrection and 10 days after the ascension so he resurrected he died on the cross this is the cross he died on the cross resurrected stayed around about 50 days revealing himself and then ascended 
when he ascended 10 days later after his ascension was when the Holy Ghost came down so in all about 60 days after Jesus Christ resurrected that was when the Holy Ghost came down and the church age was activated praise the name of the Lord and you know the church being caught up is an escape for the church from the tribulation because the bible teaches us that the body of christ will not be the part of the wrath of god we have escaped the wrath of god by becoming born again like i said earlier on there are those who insist that the church is going to pass through the tribulation but that does not agree with scriptures i'll give you several scriptures that points out that we have escaped the wrath of God and will because the tribulation period is the period of the wrath of God God is going to be pouring out judgments destructions of every kind upon the earth and we are not going to be part of it you can write down first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 and look it up first Thessalonians 5 9 revelation chapter 3 verse 10 revelation chapter 3 verse 10 Nahum chapter 1 verse 2 Nahum chapter 1 verse 2 and uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 9 now pastor I would want you to read first Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 14 first Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 14 to 18 Yeah, you can read that. Meanwhile, I'll take those Bible verses again. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, Revelation 3 verse 10, Nahum 1 verse 2, and Romans chapter 5 verse 9. You may read now, Pastor. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then, also we sleep in Jesus, we God bring with him. Hallelujah. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them prevent them which are asleep so there are two categories of people that will be raptured there are those that are asleep those that are dead the believers that are dead and then there are the believers that are alive go ahead for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive then and remain we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the to, air to meet the Lord in the air praise the name of the Lord Hallelujah. you know the rapture was so real to Paul Paul um, was the revelator of the rapture Jesus Christ revealed um, the doctrine of the rapture to Paul the Apostle and it's it amazes me that there are theologians and believers that reject the ministry of Paul totally they reject the books of Paul they say Paul was not of Christ but if you check the whole of the New Testament Paul practically wrote the bulk of it revelations that confirms things that were and things that will be I believe in the ministry of Paul I believe absolutely in the rapture and I believe that the rapture will happen before the great tribulation the reason why a lot of these people reject the ministry of Paul is because they do not agree that the rapture will happen before the great tribulation but I've given you several scriptures go through those scriptures you will see that they each specify that we are going to escape from the wrath we are not going to be part of the wrath of God and this is the wrath of God this seven year period is the period of the wrath of God praise the name of the Lord and so the rapture is gonna happen like Paul said um, those of us that are, are dead in Christ in fact Paul so much believed in the rapture that he said we that are alive and remain he was expecting the rapture to happen in his time he believed it so much that he said we that are alive and remain we will be caught up to meet with the Lord in the air alongside with those that died praise the name of the Lord so before the great tribulation the church is raptured as you can see here then the next rapture 
the number six rapture is the rapture of the two witnesses revelation chapter 11 from verse 3 revelation chapter 11 from verse 3 to 18 it's lengthy i'll stop you where i want you to stop revelation 3 you can read revelation 11 from verse 3 rather and i will give power unto the two witnesses i will give power unto who the two witnesses the two witnesses two prophets they are going to be two jewish prophets i'm not going to explain in details who these prophets are today because um, when I'm explaining about the great tribulation and the tribulation in another topic, I will give you detailed explanations about these uh, two witnesses. Yes, go on. And they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred and three score days. Amazing prophets. They will prophesy a thousand, two hundred and three score days. Clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the house. And if any man we hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man we hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony. When they have finished their testimony. You know, that, that should encourage you that when you are on assignment for God, nobody can stop you until you have finished that assignment. Nobody can take you out. So when they finish their testimony, what happens? The beasts that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war, against, make war them against them and shall overcome them and kill them and kill them hold on so the beast was only able to overcome and kill them when they had finished their assignment according to god's timing and that's why believers should not be afraid of death you should not be afraid that the enemy is going to kill you because you are a man on assignment you are a woman on assignment go ahead and they are dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt so their dead bodies will be left on the streets i mean these prophets were so powerful that they tormented the inhabitants of the earth the antichrist was trying to operate they would not allow and they prophesied they call down they hinder rain from falling they call down rain whenever they want the inhabitants of the earth during the great tribulation would be really afraid of this prophet so afraid of this prophet that when they died people were sending gifts one to another presidents were sending gifts they were celebrating it will be shown on bbc on on cnn al jazeera and the rest of them nta all of them will be showing it that thank god oh, will they say thank god okay <laughs> thank whatever these men are dead and uh, all of that so go ahead and read where also our Lord was crucified, and they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and half. Three and a half and days and half. their dead body will be on the streets of Jerusalem. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and in half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Hallelujah. And they stood up upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Unto them, Come up, come up, hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Go ahead. And the same hour, was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were afflict affrighted and gave glory to the god of heaven hallelujah so what happens is that uh, these men tormented they prophesied did the will of god because a lot of the people around in this period they they are for satan but um, the, the prophets stood against them, prophesied, and did a great lot of mighty things. 
And then when they are killed, they are left on the streets for three and a half days. Then suddenly the life of God entered into them. They were resurrected and they were taken up to heaven in the full view of everybody. They were caught up to heaven. God said, come up. And that's the rapture of these uh, um, two witnesses. They were raptured, which is the number six rapture. The two witnesses were raptured, taken to heaven. And the Bible says, when that happens, as they go to heaven, there will be a great earthquake such that 7,000 people will die at once. Now, those that are around during the tribulation, if you are listening to me right now and you are in the tribulation, you just went to YouTube to check what to do um, because a lot of people had been raptured. If you are listening to me now, you should know that if you see an earthquake that happens during the tribulation and 7,000 people dies at once after two men are raptured to heaven, you should know that this matter is real. You should fall on your knees and surrender your life to God and refuse to take the mark of the beast. Because if you take the mark of the beast, which is 666, there is no more salvation for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's the rapture of the two witnesses. And then the last rapture is the rapture of the tribulation saints. And we have that in um, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter, let's take it. We have um, three verses to read. Let's take Revelation chapter 7 first. Revelation chapter 7 from verse 14 to 15. In the case of the tribulation saints, okay, I'll explain that as we read the Bible. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14, start with that. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are the which came out of the great tribulation. These are the which. Those which, okay, came out of the great tribulation. Those that came out of the great tribulation. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore are they before the throne of god and serve him day and night so where did they come out from they came out from the great, the great tribulation. tribulation they were caught up that's a rapture yeah go on therefore are they before the throne of god and serving day and night in his temple and he that seated on the throne shall dwell among them they hallelujah so let's have revelation chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3 while you open to Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. Revelation 14 from verse 1 to 3. And I look and lo. 20 verse 4. Go ahead. And I look and lo. A lamb stood in the, in the mansion. And with him. And 144,000. How many seen? people? 144,000 people. Yeah. Having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven. As the voice of many waters. And as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard a voice of. Of helpers. Happing with their halves. Okay you can. Happy with their halves. You can stop there. So we now we have the 144,000. 144,000 people these people are actually jews they are jewish servants jewish evangelists and ministers that operated during the great tribulation period these are jews this particular set are jews 144,000. but then let's have revelation chapter 20 verse um, 4. and i saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of so, Jesus. So, the souls of those that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. There are those that are going to refuse to take the mark of the beast. And when they refuse and rather choose to believe in God, what, what is the Antichrist and the false prophet going to do to them? They're going to chop off their heads. And when they chop off their heads, they... Uh, going to become saved, right? Those ones also are going to be cut up towards the end of the great tribulation. They, they are going to be cut up. So go ahead. And for the word of God, 
and which had not worshipped the beast. They did not worship the beast. Neither his image. And remember, they are now in heaven, right? Go ahead. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a hundred years. They lived and reigned with Christ. How many years? A thousand years. Oh my. A thousand years. So they are going to come back with Christ to reign in the millennial reign a thousand years. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have two categories of people uh, in this place here. The tribulation saints. There is the 144,000 Jewish servants. And then there are others who were attacked and killed um, because they would not accept the mark of the beast. And so all are caught up to be with the Lord in heaven. So we have seven raptures in all. Enoch, Moses, Elijah, Jesus, the church, the two witnesses, and the tribulation saints. And actually, within this tribulation period, there might be much more than uh, these two, this, the rapture of these witnesses and these other two. It appears like there is still one round of uh, rapture, but um, it suffices us to know that there are basically these seven raptures of the tribulation sin, because there are still saints here who will not die right in the tribulation they 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 pass through this tribulation they refuse to take the mark of the beast they chose to believe in god somehow they escaped they were not beheaded maybe they ran to the farmlands and all of that and at the end they also are going to be raptured i believe they are going to be raptured to be with the lord because all of the saints of god are going to have to come back to the earth with Jesus Christ. Remember, I taught you um, when I was teaching uh, last on Sunday, I taught you that from the four winds of the earth and from one end of heaven to another end of heaven, God is going to gather all his saints. So those that are alive here, he will gather them from one end of the earth to the other. And then those in heaven, he will gather all of them will all be in the clouds and Jesus is going to descend at the second coming. So there is a descent here. Remember the Holy Ghost came down here. There's another descending here which is Jesus Christ coming down at the end of the great tribulation. That's where the battle of Armageddon takes place when he comes back the second coming. Armageddon. Now, during this period, towards the end of this, the beast and the false prophet will be making war against the Jewish people. Now, let me explain this. You see, when the reason why the church is taken out is because God wants to return to dealing with the Jewish people. Before the church came on board, God only dealt with the Jewish people, Israel. But when the Jewish people turned against God, God wanted to provoke them to jealousy. And so they were cut off. And we, the church, were grafted in as the bride of Christ. But then God is not totally done with uh, the Jewish people. So in order for God to return to deal with the Jewish people and to bring about their redemption, the church will be taken out at the rapture. And then the tribulation period majorly focuses on the Jewish people. And that is why when the Antichrist comes, he will make a peace treaty with the Jewish people that will last for three and a half years. But after the first three and a half years, the antichrist is going to break that agreement and attack the nation of israel so the tribulation period majorly focuses on the jewish people praise the name of the law and so he's going to attack them and in the process he will in fact at this point the antichrist is going to go to the temple mount in jerusalem and 
take over the temple and sit in the temple as God. And that's where people will be worshipping him from. So he takes the temple of God over there, sits there, and then the false prophet commands everybody to worship the Antichrist. The Antichrist would have been given, um, the devil would give the Antichrist his throne and his power. And so he's possessed of the devil and is a human being possessed of the devil operating as the Antichrist. And uh, so he sits in the temple and demands to be worshipped. And the attack is so intense on the Jewish people and they would have wiped out the Jewish people except that suddenly Jesus comes back at the second coming. He comes back with the saints. He comes back with the armies of heaven. And you and I are going to be riding in that army. Praise the name of the Lord. So he returns in the midst of this battle to wipe out the nation of Israel. If you take note of it, the mission of Satan has always been to wipe out the nation of Israel. Hitler tried it and failed. The Islamic nations are doing their best, even currently now. I hope you know Iran uh, shot uh, <laughs> missiles into, into the nation of Israel. They are doing everything to wipe the nation of Israel out. Even all the way to the Great Tribulation, the mission will be to wipe out the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, because they are the people of Jesus. You know, uh, in Revelation, the Bible tells us of the woman that was pregnant, and then the dragon stood waiting for the woman to give birth. That woman is the nation of Israel. And then uh, when she gave birth to the Messiah, which is the child she gave birth to, the, the, the dragon wanted to kill the child, but the child was caught up to heaven. Jesus was caught up to heaven. And so the, the beast, dragon, got angry and went to attack the woman. And while he was pursuing the woman to kill the woman, the earth helped the woman. And uh, the woman escaped and was taken to the wilderness. There is actually going to be a place, a wilderness, where the Jewish people will escape to. I think uh, it's called Petra. They are going to escape during the Great Tribulation. Anybody who can make it to Petra will be protected. Uh, just in case you choose to be around, around that time, and you need a place where you'll be protected, look for wherever is Petra. There is going to be a special protection for the Jewish people there. If you find your way there, you can be protected. But I doubt if you'll be able to find your way there because there'll be a whole lot of chaos in the world at the time. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So, so like the woman was taken to the wilderness and was protected, the children of Israel are going to be taken to a particular place and they are going to be protected, right? So, now the Bible says, when the beast discovered that the woman had escaped, what did the beast do? The dragon. The dragon went after the remnants, came back to meet the church people that did not go with the rapture. The devil always wants somebody to deal with. So he couldn't catch the baby. He couldn't deal with the woman. If you are around, he comes for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so here comes Jesus at the second coming, defeats the Antichrist. And uh, you remember the devil is arrested and thrown in the bottomless pit, right? Bottomless pit. An angel arrests the devil, throws him in the bottomless pit at the second coming of Jesus. And then the Antichrist and the false prophet who promoted him are thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire. LF. I'm not going to go into details of that here because I've taught it already. It casts them into the lake of fire. And then... Jesus establishes his millennial reign here before the new heaven and the new earth within this um, space. Jesus establishes the 1,000 year reign, the millennial reign here on earth. And after the 1,000 years, where Jesus reigns on earth with the saints, then the Satan is released from the bottomless pit. He comes and deceives the world again. All those who have taken the mark of the beast, he deceives them again. And they, he gathers a mighty army again, just like in the Armageddon, to come and attack um, Jesus and his people. 
And that is called Gog and Magog. That's the battle of Gog and Magog. They gather Gog and Magog. They are actually uh, like a landscape, the place where the battle will take place. And so they gather there and then God descends from heaven with fire and destroys the army of the enemy. And then Satan is arrested and cast into the lake of fire. And after that, the great white throne. I believe you like this, my chair, by now. <laughs> the great white throne judgment takes place and all those who had died in sin and all those who are taking the mark of the beast the 666 they are taken to the great white throne judgment they are judged and everyone whose name is not found in the written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire which bonnets with fire and brimstone they are cast into the lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone and after that happens the new heaven and the new earth will be established in the world praise the name of the lord the new jerusalem will descend from god from above and will be on earth with us and then we will live eternally with jesus christ on earth while the sinners and all those who forsook god will live eternally in the lake of fire and hell also those that were in hell all the while hell will be cast into the lake of fire hell and death will be cast into the lake of fire praise the name of the lord are you glad to be a born again Christian now let me quickly show you something about the rapture of the church there are various raptures but I want to focus more on the rapture of the church to give you details of the rapture of the church because that's what we are really really waiting for right now the rapture is actually described as the blessed hope in the Bible the blessed hope you find that in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 Titus chapter 2 from verse 11 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, live soberly and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope, that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous unto good works these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise you so we are meant to speak about the rapture with all authority praise the name of the Lord so the rapture is called the blessed hope blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of blood, born of his spirit, wasting in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Hallelujah. So the rapture is the blessed hope. This is the hope of the saints. This is what we are looking forward to. And do you know, I'm going to teach you, uh, on Sunday, I'm going to be teaching you about the rewards we'll be receiving in heaven. So many rewards. I'll be teaching on the Bema seats. 
the, the judgment seat of Christ for rewards. And I will give you a list of all the rewards, amazing rewards we are going to be receiving in heaven. So there is a hope for us. There are things we are hoping for when we get to heaven. And uh, I pray you will be there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Now there are scoffers who do not believe in this blessed hope. They are, they are Christians, but they say there is no rapture. In 2 Peter chapter 3, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days coffers walking after their own lust and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For these they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Praise the name of the Lord. There's so much to read there, but I'll just stop here. So there are scoffers. Uh, it's written here, Peter wrote that there will be people who will rise up and speak against the rapture. They will say, no, since Jesus left, he's not coming back again. But according to scriptures, Jesus is coming back again. Just like the angel said, when he left, he's going to come back again. He's going to come back at the rapture to take up the church. He's going to come back at the second coming. Now, let's not confuse which one is first, which one is second coming. Um, there are some who say that when Jesus came first as a baby is the first coming and so that means the rapture is the second coming and then this one I call second coming is actually the third coming but it suffices us to know that he is coming whether in the second or in the third if you count when he came first as a baby then that will be first the rapture will be second and then the one he comes at the Armageddon will be taught. But just know that he is coming. Praise the name of the Lord. Whether as the second or the third, he is coming. Somebody say he is coming. He is coming. Praise the name of the Lord. I would like for you to really read through the whole of Second Peter chapter 3. From verse 3 all the way to verse 13. Because in there, the rapture is mentioned the flood of Noah is mentioned. The creation of the world is mentioned. The great white throne judgment is mentioned. And the new heaven and the new earth all are mentioned in 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 3 to 13. So let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 about the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. We have hope. Our hope is the rapture. So we, we should not sorrow as others who do not have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of, an, of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, Comfort one another with these words. The hope of the rapture, the blessed hope, is something we should comfort one another with. Every day and every time. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, the Bible says when the rapture happens, our vile bodies will be changed. According to Philippians chapter 3, from verse 20 to 21, our vile bodies will be changed. When we are caught up, we don't maintain this body. We take on an incorruptible body. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 20 to 21. You can also read up Colossians chapter 3 from verse 4 to 25. Colossians 3 from verse 4 to 25. I just need to go quickly because of time. Praise the name of the Lord. 
The church age so far has lasted 2,000 years. We are at the tail end of the 2,000 years of the church age. Remember the whole earth is to last 7,000 years. 5,000 years ha have been, has been used up and uh, the 6,000 year is what we are using right now in the church age and we are at the tail end of it. At the end, the the, the the seven years of the tribulation is included in this remaining 2,000 years. In fact, the seven year period of the great tribulation are actually the last seven years of these 2,000 years of the church. I believe there will be about three and a half years after the great tribulation I believe there will be another three and a half years before um, the Armageddon war. Why do I believe that? I believe that because the Bible says that Satan is going to be released for a little while from the bottomless pit. And when the Bible says a little while, it often refers to three and a half years. So, and, and of course, Satan will need that much time to mobilize an army all over the world at the tail end of this great tribulation so i believe the devil is going to be released for another three and a half years after the great tribulation going up and down the whole earth gathering an army after which um jesus descends and defeats him and uh, the 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 issue of the lake of fire happens sorry sorry that three and a half year period is not for the Armageddon war, the three and a half year period is for the Gog and Magog war. He's released. Jesus has come and has reigned. He is released for a three and a half year period, which is added after the thousand year reign of Christ. Sorry, I mixed it up there. It's after the, a, the thousand year reign of Christ that the three and a half year period is added so that the devil can mobilize his armies and then he's defeated finally at the Gog and uh, Magog battle. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to know that the rapture is very close. And Jesus is coming to take his bride. The church is his bride. We are the wife of Jesus. We are the bride of Christ. And Jesus is coming for a pure bride. And when it takes us out, that's when God can go back to dealing with the Jewish people. No one knows the day the rapture will happen, but then we know the season when it will happen. Matthew chapter 24 verse 36 says that no one knows the day. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 24. So every one of us needs to just be prepared for this. Matthew 24 from verse 36. Because it's going to happen soon. Matthew 24. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So no one knows the specific day. But then if you read from verse 37, it gives us the season. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You remember? Noah entered into the ark here. They were whining and dining before then. And so for those that say that um, the rapture will happen after the great tribulation, I assure you that there will be no whining and dining during the great tribulation. Nobody is giving in marriage and all of that because there will be all manner of judgments here within this period. So who has time to get married? You are looking for how to save your head. And the mountains are rejecting you. So this, the rapture actually happens before the great tribulation. And so they are whining and dining according to Matthew here. Until the flood came. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the Bible says that is how it's going to be. So people are going to be enjoying their lives. And then suddenly the rapture is going to happen. I pray you will be a part of this rapture in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, 
if you read all the way, you see that church activities will still be going on before the rapture happens. Just take your time, read the whole of the Matthew uh, chapter 24. You will see that activities of churches will still be going on before the rapture happens. And then those that are dead in Christ will be the first set to rise at the blast of the trumpet. And those of us that are alive and remain, we will be raptured and we will join up we will have glorious bodies and then we will move to heaven with the lord where we're going to be having what i call the bema seat there are three things about the rapture number one the rapture is our blessed hope number two the rapture is for the comfort of the saints and then number three the rapture is our escape from death death is swallowed up in victory once you are raptured no more death under any circumstance so rapture is our blessed hope rapture is our comfort remember the bible says comfort ye one another with this and, ra and the rapture is our escape from death not just physical death but eternal death remember at the end death and hell will be cast into the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone praise the name of the lord and you know why will our bodies need to be changed when we are raptured the bodies need to be changed because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 50, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood, the one we have now, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that's why when we are raptured, our flesh and our blood will be left behind. In fact, I'm thinking that when the rapture happens, the whole earth is going to be bloody. Because when we are raptured, our clothes and our bloods will be all over where we were standing or lying down before we were raptured. And so those remaining on earth, let's say it happened in a church, uh, during a church service, a church of about um, 20,000 people or 50,000 people, and let's say how many is raptured? Who can tell me how many? <laughs> okay, I don't know. I don't want to mention numbers. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So let's say we have a church of 50,000 people and let's say half of them are raptured. And then, um, and then as they are raptured, their clothes and their blood spills all over in the church. I mean, it's going to be a bloody service. So all over the earth, there's going to be blood everywhere because flesh and blood cannot go there. So the blood must be somewhere. All right, you've not heard that before. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit. So it's not just our clothes that will stay back. Blood will stay back. And you know, immediately the rapture will happen. The earth will plunge into chaos. Because you can imagine the pilot gets raptured. The driver gets raptured. You understand what I'm talking about? What happens to the passengers? So it's going to be chaotic in the whole world when the rapture happens. Accidents everywhere. Ships colliding with ships. Terrible things happening because the men in charge had been taken away. So immediately the rapture happens, the world sinks into chaos. And you know, that is what the Antichrist takes advantage of. To be accepted because the world will be in chaos the economies of the world will collapse people will be looking for a leader that they will look up to and that's when the antichrist appears and tells them don't worry i have the solution performs miracles changes the economy and everybody's saying yes this is the man we want and that's how they are going to crown him as the president of the whole world because he's going to bring a solution to the crisis that happens when the church is rapture because no nation will be able to handle it unless the antichrist it's been given to him to be able to do that and when he does that all the presidents of nations are going to submit their authority to him and so he becomes the president of the world and begins to solve the problems of the people but i tell you when the devil solves your problems it's because he has bigger problems for you I'll read Titus chapter 2 from verse 11 as I close. And I want you to know that God loves you and does not want you to be part 
of the tribulation. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Jesus paid the price so that you will not be a part of the great tribulation, so that you will not be in hell, and so that you will not be in the lake of fire. Also, so that you will not be at the great white throne judgment. Remember I told you, the believers are not going to be at the great white throne judgment. The believers will face their own judgment at the Bema seat, when the church is caught up to be with the Lord. We'll face our own judgment, which is uh, judgment for rewards. It's our choice as individuals. Remember, hell was not created for man. It was created for Satan and his demons. But those who reject Christ and choose their own ways and choose the devil by choosing their own ways will end up in hell and will end up in the lake of fire which was not originally prepared for human beings. Anybody who ends up in the lake of fire is not really sent there by God, but is sent there by his choice. It's people's choice that takes them to the lake of fire. If you are under the sound of my voice and you are not born again, this is your opportunity. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. And if you've been struggling with sin, the Bible says sin shall no longer have dominion over you. You need to pray this prayer with me also because what I'm talking about is real. And this thing is going to happen very soon. And you will have nobody to blame but yourself. Because the price has been paid. Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And it is by his stripes that we are healed. And there is no other name given under heaven. Whereby men shall be saved. Except the name of Jesus. And the Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. This is your opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord. And be saved and escape from the wrath that is to come. I want you to pray this prayer with me and say, Father in heaven, have mercy on me. I repent of my sins. And I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. I believe with my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. And that he died on the cross for my sins. And that he rose again the third day. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for saving me. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And I receive the Holy Ghost baptism and the fire of God. Holy Spirit of God, take over my life. And lead me in the way that I should go. And teach me to live a righteous life. Thank you my father for saving me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that your sins are remitted. Your name is written in the book of life. And you receive grace to live righteously from today forward. And I pray for you. That when this blessed hope will happen. When the rapture of the saints of the church of Christ will happen, whether dead or alive, you will be one of those that will be caught up to meet with the Lord. Father, we thank you because it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you have been blessed by this ministration, follow Apostle John Udo on Facebook at Apostle John Udo. To follow on YouTube, Type John Udo Ministries. If you need prayer, counseling, deliverance, or follow up, call plus two three four eight zero six 
and remember all things are possible